Tenemos todo hecho en tu casa Con sabor zuliano Y calor humano Los quesos en casa tienen vitaminas Rápidos de hacer En porque cocina Tan fácil como pelar mandarinas Quesitos en casa fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Quesitos en casa fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor A lo que es su hermano También que su opera Costeño matera, pay, papel y suya Y hasta doble crema Quesitos en casa fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Quesitos en casa fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Hi everyone, how are you guys? Um, welcome to my show and my channel, Dr. Casero TV. This is the English version of my program in Spanish. So if you are an English speaker and you want to learn how to make cheese, you're in the right place. So in last week, we spoke about the last part of the health and safety for cheese making and, all, and the food control plan. So now I'm going to speak about the cheese competition today. And well, the idea is that you guys, um, well, if you if you speak Spanish, you can go to my Spanish program, which, which is one hour before at 10 a.m. New Zealand time. But if you speak English and want to learn how to make cheese, you are from Australia, America, <coughs> or even from Africa. People, a lot of people from Africa is watching me uh, uh, so far. So you can learn how to make cheese, any type of cheese. Uh, of course, I am South American and I make South American cheeses, but I also make French cheeses, American cheeses, and New Zealand cheeses as well. So today, as I said, we're going to speak about the um, competitions in cheese making. Um, when we make cheese, it's very pleasant when we win an award from the an international party, for example, in my case. I have two international awards, but people that has been longer in this in this art have maybe 10, 20, or more than that, depending on the years of experience. So in my case, I'm just uh, having competed. I only have competed about three or four times, and I got two awards. And I'm going to compete now in one this this year because of COVID. We couldn't compete, but I want you to know. I want you to learn where to go, what websites to visit, what to consider when you make, if you want to um, uh, to compete, because it's very, it's, I mean, it's very grateful, uh, it's, it's, it's very good, and the feeling is very, is very uh, challenging if you win an award. It doesn't matter if you do it for, if you do, you don't have to be a, a professional cheese maker. You just need to love cheese, like me. And if you if you compete and win something, you will be saying to yourself, "I'm doing things right." So, and well, the idea is to make a difference. And if you want to learn how to do it, where to go, I'm going to teach you in what places to go, what to consider, and what um, what the judges look. And I'm going to show you the websites. If maybe we can, the thing is that my computer is very slow, so we could. Um, but I'm going to give you all the links so you can know where to go. Okay, you can. You just need to Google it, and we'll do. So, um, and I will also answer all the questions that I have from my audience during the week. People from around the world ask me questions in in English, in Spanish, and I always answer it here, of course. In the English speak, in the English version, I'm going to answer the questions in English. Some of them, the majority of them are in English, but some of them are in Spanish. So I will answer both. Okay. So um, let's start with the presentation. I'm going to, uh, if you also have any uh, a question, just let me know and I will answer it for sure. If you're making cheese during the week and you have a problem, let me know and I'll, and I'll sort it out. I'll try to sort it out for you. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's see, let's go with the, um, let's share the screen. I have a small presentation, so maybe you can uh, have a look. Okay, here we are.
Okie dokie. Okay. Uh, here we are. Okay, let's go with the for the beginning with from the beginning. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Accept is very uh, pleasant when we win an award. When I won my first award here in the New Zealand Cheese Award, I won a silver medal. And I said, ah, there is, a, there is this, this uh, cheese making competition, but I'm not qualified to do that. So I said to myself, okay, what would be the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario would be that I lose. That's it. And so what? If I lose, so what? But the experience that I will get, that's what I thought about by that time, the experience that I will get will help me out in this art because I want to carry on making cheese. And maybe I could improve if I don't win this year anything. I can win the next year or maybe the other year and so on. So I took the challenge and it was a very, a very pleasant surprise when I noticed that I, have, that I had won a silver medal in New Zealand, which is a first world country. So um, I said, okay with one of our cheeses from our one, uh, one with, with one cheese from my country with was the queso de mano is a type of cheese and well the same year i competed in the world cheese award and another surprise i won a bronze medal with a, another cheese from our from my country so i said gee i reckon i'm doing things all right and I am being competing. <laughs> COVID show up, so um, now um, <coughs> the, um, the borders in some countries are open as, uh, again, and they are allowing people to send the cheeses uh, and and for and traveling as well. So if you um, now there is an opportunity to um, to participate. In the international cheese award and so on and, and some others and i'm going to show you how, which ones okay so um what are the these cheese contests these cheese contests are tournaments where people from around the world or from around the city or from around the country <coughs> participate because they want to compete and to evaluate which cheese is best is the better is the best so, um, okay, um, there are local tournaments, national and international. I'm gonna focus in the internationals, okay? Of course, we have a, a national here one, um, the New Zealand Cheese Award. But you can also, if, if you live in, in a country, any country around the world, maybe there is a cheese making a tournament in your city or maybe in your country, <coughs> but, um, if you haven't tried, go, go and try it because um, the experience is good and it's, it's a beautiful experience and you will learn for sure. And well, you, you will take the challenge. May, maybe you will, you might have a surprise and win something or maybe not. You never know. But if you don't try, you know, you will never know. So um, in this case, I'm going to focus in the international ones. Okay. Because this is when you make the difference when you, win an international award maybe you win a gold medal or maybe you can be the best of the best you never know so the idea is to give it a try okay so uh it's in spanish <laughs> okay never mind i don't know why this presentation is in spanish because i had it in english okay never mind and the most important um the most important tournaments around the world around the planet this is one of them. So if you want, and this is the one that I'm going to compete soon. Now the entries are open. So if you rush, you might go with a fresh cheese because you're not going to have time to make a, 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 an aged cheese. But if you already have an aged cheese and you are about to open it, don't open it. Maybe you can send it to, the, to this uh, award, to the International Cheese Award. And... Um, you might win something. This is one of the most important uh, tournaments around the planet. We have three, <coughs> the most important ones. So, um, and this is one of them. Okay, this is this is this, this tournament is like a world cheese award. 
So um, this is uh, and it's in UK. Okay, it's gonna be the twenty first of October, and this is the link if you want to register. You just Google it, International Cheese Award, and they'll they'll give you uh, Google will give you the link, and then you can dive the website. You can uh, you can um, submit. You can lodge your entries online. So and you don't have to go over there. You can um, send it by courier. You can send your 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 cheeses by courier. This is what I'm going to do. <coughs> I'm going to send my cheeses uh, by courier. And my worst case scenario is that I lose. But if I win, I have a lot to win and nothing to lose. And this is the the attitude we, we should have. Okay, if you want to if you want to compete in these tournaments, if you win something, okay. You will take this tournament, sorry, you will take this award to your grave because no one will take it. Once you win it, no one will take it away. It's not, it lasts forever for all the, or your life. So, and for your cheese. And if you, even if you die, your cheese, if you, the, 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 the person ahead that followed the recipe, this cheese is going to be a, is a winner because it's following this recipe. Okay. Of course, you have to make the cheese the same way all the time and follow the same procedure because and put the same use the same type of milk the same culture because you have to follow a recipe <clears throat> okay and you and this oh and this medals and and um in this in this cheese award you can win bronze medal silver medal gold medal of course between the gold medals uh, what, what this um, um, awards do, they take all the gold medal from the um, tournament and from all the gold medals, <coughs> they choose the best of the best. And then this is the one who wins the International Cheese Award, the best of the best. And it's, it's valid worldwide. So I invite you, it's going to be the 21st of October, I invite you to ready to dive it if you want to participate. Um, in, or if you don't, at least have a look. If you don't have time to, to send your cheeses, but at least have a look so you know that it exists, this is the link, okay? Okay, another one is the World Cheese Award. This is the most important. Uh, ah, the last one is gonna be in UK, okay? In Bringley, Bingley Hall, Staffordshire, UK. The other one, um, the, um, this company that organized the, um, the event is called the Gilly Guild of Food or something like that. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> and this year, sorry, last year there was no no tournament because of COVID, but now they reopen it and it's uh, and it's going to be um, the in Oviedo, Spain, okay, which is part of Asturias. It's in a it's a place in Spain, and it's gonna be from November three, the third to the sixth of this year, okay? It was original scheduled for 200, for 2020, <coughs> but because of COVID, um, they postponed it for uh, for this day. Because the idea is that the, um, to keep the spirit of the of the tournament, that it has been the same spirit for over 30 years. So we have to, these guys were, were, were looking for, um, for the right moment. Um, to open it again, and this is the time. In this award, you need to be a professional cheese maker. Okay, so you have to be registered. You have to have your systems in, play, in place. And maybe if you're starting to make cheese, you cannot participate in this cheese award. I won a silver medal in this award in 2018. Okay, with one of my one of my cheeses, and I still and I still have the the medal. And I will have it forever. Um, the good things about the metal is that when you make th this metal, make your cheeses, if you are selling cheese, of course, make your cheeses more um, attractive to the client. People will pick up or people will choose a, a, a cheese with metal instead of a cheese without any metal. So it will market your product. Um, of course, you have to get it. You have to pay a fee um, and send your cheeses. It, you have to invest some kind of money. Um, but 
the satisfaction is much more than the what the money that you spend of course depending on the type of award that you compete is the fee for example in this one the fee is a record 90 dollars 90 pounds sorry 90 pounds per piece in the other in the international cheese award is more economical and the fee the, the fee is lower is from eight dollars to 25 dollars sorry yeah eight dollars to 25 dollars or no eight pounds from eight pounds to 25 pounds so um in this case is 90 pounds then or 80 pounds per per piece so you, if you are a professional cheese maker maybe you can invest one thousand dollars and send 10 15 pieces if you want to know more about it this is the website okay go to the guilds of food is the and it's also in the uk is a is it's an uk um, um organization but they move every year the place of the award so <clears throat> the one that i won in 2018 was in norway and in this case it's going to be in spain so in oviedo oviedo is a is a part is a city of spain okay um another one <coughs> The, this one is the the first tournament of the best the most important tournament of the planet secondly comes this one the international Jesus award and the third one comes and this is the third one okay this the, uh, this is in wisconsin is gonna uh, the competition is um um they're postponed they're not gonna do it this year okay it was canceled because of covid and they're going um, but this, this, this american cheese uh, award is from the american cheese society which is in wisconsin specifically in iowa so um they decided to cancel the the event for this year and they're gonna do it for next year okay and um, they say we are inventing the best way to offer this element of American Cheese Society to our members by the end of 2021. But it's not going to happen by 2021. Maybe maybe they will open it. They will start opening um, the, um, the registration by the end of the year, and the award will be maybe two or three months after. So, um, But the American Cheese Society uh, is one of the most important societies of the, of the world in cheese making. So if you want to you can you can register in the three of them if you want to register you don't have to pay any fee you just go over there register you register <clears throat> and they will send you the information about the, the the tournament when it show up so um, my suggestion if you want to compete just register lost your application um name of your of your name your company what you do if you're a professional cheese maker, you don't have to be a professional cheese maker to compete in this American Cheese Society either. And they will send all, it's, it's good because they will send you information periodically um, um, about the news of cheese making. So you can be updated with information. So I reckon it's worth, it's worth it to register in this, in this um, society. And the other one is the um, New Zealand Champions of Cheese Award. This is in, um, in here in New Zealand. It's a national competition, but I would say um, it's not national. It's international as well, but not for people from from America um, because it's very complicated to send the cheese, right? Of course, if you if you compete if, and you are from America, you want to send your cheese and you and you you can guarantee your product. And you can deliver your product in the time frame that the cheese um, arrive perfect. Specifically, if you send aged cheeses, for example, if you if you send a Parmesan, Parmesan Origiano, or Parmesan style, sorry, or a Manchego, or any type of aged cheese that lasts the the trip, you can compete. But for now on, the competition are closed. They're gonna open more or less in May next year i'm going to compete in this one next year um by the way i haven't made a cheese either 
um, but um, you can compete. People from Australia can compete with fresh cheeses because the the trip from Australia to here to New Zealand we're just neighbors, and will take maybe two or three days, no more than that. If you send it by the by Federal Express or DHL, it will take maybe two one or two days, no more than that. So, um, but you can compete in in this award. This is the New Zealand Specialty Cheese Association, Cheese Maker Association. I belong to this association as well with my company. And but anyway, the tournament are is closed for this year. It's finished. They made it in May because we didn't have COVID. We could make the competition and without any problems. And the thing is that not many people could travel, and not many cheeses could travel either because of the COVID. Many and New Zealand had the borders closed, so no product could come. But anyway, in this year, um, maybe uh, oh, next year, sorry, next year. By May or by February, January, February, you have to start registering. Go to this website, New Zealand uh, Specialty Cheese Association, and the, um, you can register your interest. And of course, you have to register first in the association. And the president is Neil Wilman. And call him if you want to compete. Okay. Okay. This is this is it. This is what I have to for today. Regarding the, um, this competition, as I said, it's not very complicated. The idea is that you guys compete, take the challenge. And now tomorrow I have a, a cheese making webinar at 10 a.m. to make this Venezuelan cheese. And so um, the idea is if, if you want to learn how to make it, it's a cheese with a lot of holes. Um, you can register in my bio. There is the link. My Instagram bio, or at Dr. Casero, you can register yourself and complete for tomorrow. Um, register and do the webinar, make the, the, the webinar with us tomorrow. And of, as the same, if you want to compete, if you want to help the channel, you can buy one of these t shirts and stuff. The idea is just to help the channel to give us more content. I'm working in a video. I didn't say that in the in the Spanish version. I'm working in a video. We're going to teach you how to make provolone. Provolone cheese. We're going to make provolone cheese. And I already record the video. And I haven't taken the, the footage for the shots of the, cheese, of the cheese making process, but I'm going to make it. Maybe tomorrow. And... Next week, by next week, this video should be uh, launching the channel, and you guys can learn how to make provolone, provolone cheese. Okay, and well, now let's go with the QA. Uh, uh, with the questions and answers, and let me go here, and let's get rid of this. Okie dokie. So um, let's go and answer some questions. I am in some, um, some of the questions are from my channel. Some of them are from a group that I'm in. And I always try to answer their questions as well. But if they can come so that yes, them to visit my channel and if they like it, can they, they can carry on um, asking questions. And Okay. Okay. Let's see. Someone asked here. Hi, I'm going to make Emmental, and the recipe calls for three fourths of a teaspoon of thermoculture, and then 30 minutes waiting. Is it possible to put one quart of teaspoon and wait 1.5 hours to ripe? Thanks. Okay, look, <clears throat> this is a very good question, and it's a very complicated question. Yes or no? Yes or no? Why? Let's put it this way. If you put less culture, um, when you make cheese, when you make, you have to expect a rate of acidification within a time frame. So if you make, to put an example, I'm, I'm, I expect that my pH target will be reached at two hours, three hours, whatever. 
if you put less bacteria or less amount of culture, your rate of acidification will be lower. Therefore, you will have to take long, a longer time, longer. Yeah, we have to take longer uh, time to reach your pH level. And time is money. And let's put this case scenario that you are not making cheese for selling just for fun. Okay, no problem. But you will have to spend longer and you have to be there longer to get the same result. So what is the point of staying 1.5 hours and that I wouldn't say 1.5 hours um, than um, three hours, okay? So look, one thing that you have to consider is when you use your culture, this hour that we use to ripen the milk is not to acidify the milk. This is something that you have to understand very carefully. When you put your lactic culture and you spend one hour, this one hour is to give time for the bacteria to wake up, not to acidify the milk. At the first hour, there is no acid production. There is only the bacteria is being awakened. Okay? It's awake now. After one hour, the bacteria is awake. And after the hour is when the bacteria is going to start feeding from the lactose and producing a lactic acid. If you use less amount of bacteria in the same, the bacteria, okay, will be less amount of bacteria in the, into the whey. Of the bacteria will start feeding from the whey, from, from the lactose, sorry, less amount, of, less amount uh, of bacteria into the whey, but with the same amount of lactose. To, the lactose is used by the bacteria as a food, and they will start producing lactic acid. If you have less bacteria in your milk, after the hour, the bacteria will start producing lactic acid. But due to the fact that, the, that they, you have less bacteria, you have less amount of bacteria, your rate of, of acid production will be lower than if you would have three quarters of a, of a spoon, of, of a teaspoon of lactic bacteria. Okay? And, you will and your cheese making process will be longer. So what is the point of making it longer if you can make it in the, in the right time frame? Okay? When you make it in a, in a longer time frame, you make mistakes, and you have your, your process, you, all your, you're, you're going to be more exposed to the elements, and you can be exposed to more jest, more Streptococcus aureus, uh, whatever. I mean... Um, you could be a victim of cross-contamination because you're being more exposed. So the idea is to do it at the right time, within the time, within, within the same, within, within the right time frame. Okay. So my advice: use the three quarters of a teaspoon as the recipe. Don't try to invent the wheel. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other one. <clears throat> Hi. I have a question. <clears throat> what kind of a log do you keep to record the type of cheeses you make? And what stage they are in their aging process, etc. Okay, look, when you make cheese, when we make cheese, we have to consider several parameters. I'm gonna tell you the most important ones, okay? All I'm gonna tell you is all of them. Then you have to put it in the in your in your in your in your table, in your, in your form. First, you have <coughs> you have to put the date and the batch number. Okay. How do you make it? How do you number your batch? This is up to you. What I do is I put the date. For example, my batch number is 2021, which I know that is the year. 09, which is the month. Zero. Today is the ninth. Today is the ninth. 11th, 11th, uh, yeah, 11th. So my batch today is 2021-09-11. If I make, because I make one batch per day, if I make two or three batches per day, you can put 2021-09-11-01. 
or O2 on O3, if you make three patches. This is one way. In this way, you know, just by watching the batch, the, the batch number, you know the date it was done. But this is me. You can use another, another number if you want, another, another way to number it if you want. So you need the batch number, you need the date, you need the volume of meal that you're using, the type of cheese that you're making, the temperature when the milk arrive. Okay, you have to know that. You have to, um, the pH of the milk if you want to, it's not compulsory, but if you want to measure the pH when you are, when the milk arrive, it will, you will control in if the milk is fresh or not. Okay, because if the, if the, if the pH of the milk is acid, this milk is not good, so you know. You might do it also. I don't do it because my milk always comes fresh. We, I'm, uh, we are in a, in a first world country. People obey the law. But if you are making cheese in a third world country and you make, make it, maybe your supplier give you raw milk and it's raw milk from yesterday, he didn't cool him, cool him up, it might get a little bit acid. So it's a good practice to measure the pH. Okay, you have to measure, as I said, the volume, the temperature. You have to also um, put into the form if you're going to use, if you're going to pasteurize, what temperature did you pasteurize the milk? What temperature did you cool down? What time did you did you reach the, the pH temperature? Um, but if you're not pasteurizing, you have to include as well in your form, um, you have to inoculate your milk with lactic bacteria. You have to include what type of bacteria was it? If it was methophilic or thermophilic, you have to um, include as well um, um, the amount of the bacteria that you use, three grams, four grams, depending on the volume of milk. You have to also report what at what time did you did you culture your milk? Or did you inoculate your milk with the bacteria? At, at what time? At what time did you? Um, Cut all your milk, and at what time did you cut your milk? Did you cut your cheese? Okay, and at what time did you mold? And you have to register also what is the pH target of your of your cheese, and what pH did you reach? You have to register, and you have to um, after that, after that, if you reach your pH target, okay, you have to make a, a tick pH target reach book tick. Or pH, pH, pH target did not reach. Tick, you have to put it as well. Um, you have to measure the pH the next day as well. So when you make your cheese, you mold it, finish it. The next day, when you are to, if you're going to unmold your cheese, you have to measure the pH and register. And then you have to design all this, sign it. And if you're going to, to age your cheese, you have to, into the form, you have to make a record. Okay, I'm gonna um, brine it. I use brine, uh, so brine solution. The salt you have to register the supplier, everything. And well, after that, if you're going to use, if you use mold as well, you have to register what type of mold. What is the batch of the mold? The amount that you use. In general term, you have to you have to uh, include the the most information as possible. The more, the better. The, le the, le the less information that you put, you're gonna have maybe, um, um, you won't be able to trace your product. The idea to have for having this form is because if something happens, if you get a recall, for example, a recall is when you are making cheese and something happens. For example, um, yesterday I was in the supermarket and I saw a recall sign. I recall because the the the, 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 the manufacturer didn't put in the label that this product had allergens. So he had to disclose it. He made a recall. A recall is like a sign. Put in the supermarket and tell the, the people, tell the clients that the batch number, whatever, one, two, three, four, doesn't have in the in the in the in the label that it has allergens. So we have to disclose it. The same happened in all the countries, okay? Especially first world countries. 
So all these parameters you need to consider when you are making cheese and you have to design a form and put it there. Okay? And each time you make cheese, grab a form, fill them up. You can do it online as well. You can use a digital, a digital copy if you want. If you are good in Excel, for example, you can make it digital or you can do it manually and then pass it to digital, scan it, whatever. The way how you do it doesn't matter. The thing is that you have to do it if you want to do it. If you want to make cheese correctly. For example, some, uh, sometimes it happens that we make a cheese and we didn't report anything. And the cheese is very good. And because we didn't record anything, we maybe we could we, we, we will never be able to make this cheese again because we forgot the recipe. We didn't remember the amount of lactic culture that we use, the level of salt. The pH. See, so the idea is record everything because in this way you be able you will be able to trace or trace back your your product. Okay, I always do it. You don't have to have maybe you don't have to have um, a form if you don't if you don't want. For example, what I do is I just make a, a white in, in a whiteboard. I just write the the batch number, all the information that I told you. I write it down in a board and then I'll pass it to the form after. And then I, I, I record it in, in my drive. Okay, this is what I do. Okay, let's go here. And let's see. There's another question. Um, hello, I am experimenting with wine infusing via vacuum pack in my cheese. The following are my questions. Can I just keep the same packet for six days instead of opening it and repacking it? Well, look. And the other one is, with the used wine, is it okay to drink <laughs> or use for cooking? Okay, look, what, <clears throat> first of all, I don't like, um, maybe if you put the cheese in the cheese in wine, is it wine, hey? And uh, with wine, yeah. If you are infusing your cheese your wine, with wine, it's maybe because you're gonna make Monterey Jack, which is a cheese that you that you that we um, soak in wine. You might put in a you might put it in a bag <coughs> if you are gonna make if you have a lot if your bag is really big and you vacuum pack it and and the, and you have a lot of wine because the idea is that the the cheese. Is soaked in wine, so it can absorb the wine, and it's gonna be the tannins of the of the wine is also are going to cover the cheese on the outside, and you're gonna have a, a purple cheese because the wine on the and the, all the tannins and stuff will be absorbed by the by the cheese. So, um, but if you have not too much wine, I prefer. Um, I wouldn't like to use the bag because uh, you, the, the cheese is not going to be covered evenly. So my advice, just put it in a, in a bucket or whatever and soak it. So it can, it can uh, absorb it. But if your, bag is, if your bag is big enough and you, want, and, and you have a lot of wine and you, you can guarantee that your cheese is not going to suffer, go with the, with, the, with the bag if you can. It doesn't matter. Um, and you don't have to reopen the, the bag. You just need to soak it for the time that you need. One, two, three weeks, depending on the recipe. And then take it out. Now, what to do with the wine? The cheese is going to have salt on the outside because you brine it. Or maybe you didn't brine it, but you just rub it. Or maybe you mix it with the curd. So your cheese will... And we'll have salt, which, and this salt will pass to the wine. Therefore, your wine will taste salty. I reckon it's not worthy to drink it, but maybe you might use it for cooking because the cheese also might get some way out. So if, if they get some way out, this way could pass to, the, to your food, and the way is good because it's flavorous, and uh, it has flavor and um, it has aroma and uh, 
and it's going to be pasteurized because you're going to cook with it and you're going to expose this whey and this wine at let's say more than 70 degrees which is a pasteurizing term uh, temperature so, so you could go with the with the cooking option no problem okay i wouldn't drink it i hope i have answered your question okay, okay another question here hey hello there doctor hello there cheese doctor i'm new to the channel and new in cheese making Sadly, I'm allergic to cow's milk dairy, though I will still indulge in some cow's milk cheese every now and then. Okay, fair enough. But I have a wonderful milk goat. I get about a half a gallon of fresh goat milk every day. So I'm beginning to make cheese, and I would love your opinion of some good cheeses I can make with goat milk. Obviously, chevre and halloumi. Yes, I was going to say that. Chevre and halloumi is, is a good option. Um, yesterday, I started gold milk camembert, but I'd love to hear some thoughts from you. Well, you can make two more cheeses. You can make feta. Feta is a very good cheese. Feta with gold milk is a, has a very strong flavor because of the gold milk. And you're not going to believe it, but you can make as well mozzarella. You can make goat mozzarella. To make goat mozzarella is not very easy, okay, because the goat milk is partially uh, homogenized. And in theory, you cannot make cheese with homogenized milk. But due to the fact that the goat milk is partially homogenized and not all, not all homogenized, you may get most, uh, both... Um, gold mozzarella and give it a try in my channel there is a video i made goat milk mozzarella okay there's a video and this is the recipe go over there watch the video and you will be able to make goat milk mozzarella okay these are two cheeses that you can make uh, uh, beside the one that you, that you said goat mozzarella and feta and you can also make fresh fresh goat cheese. That's no problem. You can make goat ricotta as well. Now my head is, my brain is thinking. You can make ricotta as well. From all the way that you that you use, make ricotta. That's another product you can use, and so on. Okay, Joe. Joe is asking. Uh, uh, I have a technical question. I sold the cord using large grain C. Sold. And when I taste the when I taste after pressing, I always expect to be crunching those large grains, but it never happened. As if they have been absorbed into the cheese completely. I even expect I, I even expected to be too salty because I always have the feeling I am adding too much. But no, never too salty. It is a pressure which is helping those grains absorb and disappear into the cheese. Does the salt get used by the process going on inside the cheese itself? Just curious. Okay, look, when you mix your cheese, your 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 grain salt into a cheese. The cheese has a lot of moisture, okay? And the salt um, is the concentrated product. And there is a phenomenon called osmosis. And the, the way that is inside the cheese dissolves the grains. But because of osmosis, the osmosis pass, is absorbed by the cheese and pass through and spread into the inside and is spread it it spread it evenly because the osmosis helps to do that okay this is um osmosis is a is a um, process when a liquid which is the brine because when you rub the when you put the the the, the grains and you still have brine you still have whey inside the the, the whey will dissolve the grains and by osmosis the concentration 
the osmosis is, a, is a, the path through the um, a liquid from a bigger concentration to a lower concentration. And it will try to equalize the, the, um, the concentration of both elements. So, because you have a lot of concentration in your in your salt in, in your in, in, in your salt, because you have uh, the grains over there, it will spread up, and this is why you never taste it crunchy. Of course, temperature will help you to do that as well, because when, if 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 the curd is still warm, the uh, the heat will help you to the synergies, which is to expel away, and then th this way will help to dissolve the grains. It's a it's a chain. Okay. Uh, what else is the question? Yeah, it's, it's absorbed. Okay, I, I reckon I answer your question. Susie, Susie is answer, is asking here. Hi, I have, I have had an epic halloumi fails two weeks on a row because my cord is falling apart during the cooking in hot way step. Any reason for that? The only reason, and it's, sometimes it happens, when you don't press your curve accordingly, your cheese will fall apart. So the, the, the problem that you're having is that you are making halloumi, but you are not pressing the cheese enough. So um, what to do? Um, you have to press your cheese at least four hours. After four hours, just cut it in cubes or in blocks and put it into the whey. And you have to at least press it for four hours so the cheese can be strong and can support the cooking. Otherwise, it will fall apart. Okay. This is the only question, the, the only reason that I see, the only explanation that I see. Okay. Uh, Parsh, Parshba. Kapadia as asking, bringing, sorry, brining of cheese wheel is done at a specific temperature. Ah, brining of cheese is done at a specific temperature. Can I brine the cheese wheel in my fridge at five degrees temperature? Yes, you can. You can brine your cheese at five degrees temperature. Remember, when you brine your cheese, the brine should be between five and 5.5, .5, the pH. Because this is more or less the pH of your cheese. If your brine is 6 pH, pH 6, um, it's not good, okay? It's not good. Um, because the, uh, if you put the brine, if you put the cheese that have a lower, a, low, a bigger acidity, it will tend to, the, the acidity will tend to equalize. So the idea is to, uh, and you can be a victim of, if your pH is too high. You can have you can be a victim of cross contamination because if your brine is too alkaline, it will be exposed to ele to the elements and it will be attacked by by bacteria and stuff. So the idea the, the the good practice is to have your brine between the pH five and five point five. Okay, and um, which is the more or less the same pH of the cheese. The hotter the brine, the faster is the absorption of the salt. If you have your brine at five degrees, okay, it's all right, but you have you will have to rate, you will have to um, to brine your cheese for a longer period of time. In general terms, your brine should be between ten and fifteen degrees Celsius. Okay, and the and the um, criteria for brining a cheese is. You have to weigh the weight of the cheese, let's say, and multiply this amount by the height of the cheese in inches. Let's put an example. If I have this cheese, okay, if I have my cheese, and my cheese weight, let's say, four pounds, okay, four pounds, and the height of my cheese is three inches. Four times three is 12. You have to multiply, you have to leave your cheese in the brine, 12 hours. Okay, this is more or less the criteria that we use. Okay, and this is the same criteria that we have a uh, Gavin Weaver uses as well. So, um, which is another cheese maker from Australia, and, and it has a YouTube channel. I invite you to to watch it if you want. Okay, 
Um, but this is more or less the criteria. Um, yeah. And the hotter the, the hotter the cheese, the faster will be the absorption of salt. There is a formula that tells you that the exact time, but and that's not worth it to do all the numbers. It's better to follow this criteria. OK. Another question here. How much time do we have left? Uh, we have 10 more minutes. OK, no problem. I have about four questions, five questions. OK. Uh, it says here, my Parmesan has been on the drying mat since Thursday, one week tomorrow. It's very oily. Is it normal? I know it says to put a paper towel under it after waxing it, but nothing about the oil before waxing. Look, <clears throat> I don't have the name. Never mind. Okay, look. If you're making Parmesan or Parmesan style cheese, you have to skim the milk first. Parmesan cheese, if the casein fat ratio is, um, let's say, uh, smaller, if the casein fat ratio is smaller, your curd will be um, oily. Let's put it in another way. The more fat that you have, the softer your cheese will be. If your cheese has a lot of fat, your cheese will be softer and will be oily as well. So if you're making Parmesan style cheese, you have to skim your milk. That's the reason why Parmesan cheese is scrumbly, because the, the, the less fat that we have, the harder it's going to be the cheese. So if your cheese is getting oily, is because you haven't taken all the fat and you have to, um, you're gonna have, I mean, it's a, it's a defect that you have in your cheese. So you're not gonna be able to make Parmesan because your cheese is oily, you have too much fat. So my suggestion, don't, don't finish it, age it, but it's not gonna be a Parmesan cheese. It's gonna be maybe um, a Gouda cheese, let's say, I don't know. Uh, or maybe, uh, no, I wouldn't say uh, um, maybe a sardo cheese, cheese from Argentina. It would be, could be a sardo cheese. Uh, but or forget about Parmesan because you have too much fat. And the cheese will carry on doing uh, expelling oil. And your wax is not going to be attached to the cheese because it's too... It's too the oil, I mean, the wax will go away and your cheese will be um, exposed to fungus and stuff on the inside of the wax. And your wax is, won't, will not attach to your, to, your rind, to your rind. So you're not going to get Parmesan. Sorry for telling you the news. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, it's not the end of the world. You will be able to make another type of cheese. And we, I assure you that your cheese will taste great. So don't worry about it. Don't get disappointed. For your next cheese, make sure that you take all the way, all the fat out. Okay, you have to skim your the way. Um, I don't remember the the fat percentage of the um, of the Parmesan cheese, but the thing is that you have to standardize your milk. How do you standardize your milk? You have to use a, 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 a square called the, um, what do you call it? Yeah, I forgot the name. Um, the Pearson square. You have to use the Pearson square. In my channel, there is a video how to standardize the milk using the Pearson square or the square of Pearson. Okay. And the Parmesan cheese style, the Parmesan style cheese have to have, let's say, 2% of fat and because you don't you know you're not gonna wait the thing is that in italy they use raw milk and they skim the milk during the night and they skim it the next day but in your case you're not gonna do that because you don't i mean you don't have time 
and to work with numbers to work to work in a quantitative quantitative way you have to work with the numbers so what you have to do is to the normal milk that you're using you have to introduce skin milk and this is the and the the, um, the Pearson square tells you how to do it for example if you're using five liters of normal milk 3.4 fat 3.4 percent fat to make a milk two uh, percent fat you have to use let's say uh, 15 liters of skim milk one percent or 0.5 percent fat by mixing both milks you, you're going to achieve the two percent of the parmesan that you want that you need in this way you won't have the oily cheese because you're following the recipe Maybe in you what, what you're doing is you're doing by eye and skimming the milk or just by eye, and this is what you get an oily, an oily cheese. And you will not have parmesan. You won't have it won't have the, the hardness of the parmesan because you, it has too much fat in, in it. The your casein ratio is too high. Sorry, your casein ratio is too low because you have too much fat. So you have to um for your next cheese do it this way and i reckon you will be have better luck next time okay <clears throat> uh, and i know uh, one question asiago is in the brine till tomorrow do they get hard well asiago is an italian cheese is it you know, yeah it's an italian cheese um but it won't get hard as Parmesan, as Parmigiano Reggiano, or Parmesan style. It will get hard, I would say, like Gouda, or Edam, but, or maybe Cheddar, but not very, very hard because, um, of, the, because of, the, of the fat content. Um, but Asiago is a very good cheese. Give it a try. It's, hard, it's not hard, hard. It's semi-hard cheese, I would say. Okay? And Kaylee, last questions. Saying here, I am making Jarisberg cheese with raw milk. I took, sorry, I took it off the press today. It's been in the brine, and now the cheese is very spongy. Ooh, doesn't seem right. You're right. Could this be coliform, or could be Propioni Germani have worked? this fast look if you're making cheese with raw milk for sure you will have coliforms for sure so um but if you're using because you use um um propioni germani you might expect and uh, your cheese to be spongy maybe you put too much amount of propioni bacteria and the bacteria is feeding from the lactose and producing the co2 that will make your cheese spongy okay um what can i what can you do if you if you if you trust your milk and your milk is good you have to ripen your cheese at least for 60 days more don't eat it don't up don't cut the cheese and don't consume the cheese before 60 days because the coliform if, if let's put the worst case scenario you have coliform you have to allow the coliform to die okay so you have to ripen your cheese for leave it more than 50 more than 60 days the lack of humidity uh, will kill the coliform that's when you, you when we make cheeses with raw milk the standard says that you have to consume this cheese after 60 days minimum you can leave it four months if you want okay night uh, five months it will all depend after 60 months the coliforms have died so it won't affect your health give it a try carry on ripening and then you will see if um in my i reckon is the propioni that is working and this is why it's spongy. And maybe because it's too spongy, maybe you put too much. Carry on. This is the way to learn. Maybe after 60 days, when you cut it, you have a lot of holes 
it means that you put too much propion in your money and then you have to lower the amount for the your next year. But this is how we will this is how we learn. If we don't try, we never learn. For example, I was making today mozzarella. I'm going to compete in the International Cheese Award and I'm going to send a buffalo mozzarella. And I put and I wanted to make the mozzarella in with the quick method method, which is using lactic acid. I didn't remember that the buffalo milk has a higher level of calcium than the go, that the cow's milk. So when I inoculated, when I put the, the citric acid into my milk, okay, I said, well, I make it by the recipe. And then I realized that when I measured the pH, it was higher. And I didn't have the pH level that I expected because um, the, the curd, the milk had too much a, 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 a higher amount of calcium than um, cow's milk. So what I had to do, I had to carry on acidifying. So I have it in my, I still have it in my vat, acidifying. So after this show, which is going to finish soon, I'm going to carry on making the cheese. And acid, it's still acidifying. It, haven't, it hasn't reached the pH target yet, which is between 5.1 and 5.3. So I have I'm getting 5.6. So what I did is I just inoculated the whey because I know that in the whey I have 80% of lactose. So I just put a lactic cultures into the whey. I took out the, the curd out and allowed the bacteria to wake up. When it's awakened, I will include, and I, and I have to measure my pH. When I start noticing that my pH is getting lower, it because the, the lactic culture that I put there is feeding from the lactose that is into the whey. Now I, think I, now I can put my curd to get acidified. But I, and, 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 and you have to measure the pH in the curd, not in the whey. Because the problem is in the curd, not in the whey. And this is, when you, this, is, this is what happens when you make cheese. Sometimes things don't know, uh, don't occur as you might expect. That's the reason you're here, to learn, to know what is going to happen into, in, into your cheese or what is happening to the cheese. And then you can evolve and make a step forward to solve the problem. Okay. Well, that's it. Uh, I reckon we are finished for today. Yes. One hour, two minutes. And uh, let's say that um, I'll see you next week. I honestly, to, for next week, I'm going to talk about what I speak today. And what did I speak today this morning? I don't remember. <laughs> um, I spoke about, um, ah, I spoke about coagulation today in the Spanish program. Next week, I'm going to speak about coagulation and the problem that you might expect when you coagulate your milk. Sometimes you coagulate your milk and you don't expect the results that you are having. And the, and the, the rennet has proteolytic activity Proteolytic activity and lipolytic activity. I'll, take you, I'll tell you after a little bit more in the next program. Okay. So, um, as I said, um, see you next week. And let's see if we can use uh, my outro, which is, is here, I, I, it's a new one. So, see you next week. Okay. Take care. Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Quesos colombianos y venezolanos Todo hecho en tu casa Con sabor zuliano Y calor humano Los quesos en casa tienen vitaminas Rápidos de hacer En cualquier cocina Tan fácil como pelar mandarinas Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor A lo que su hermano También queso pera Costeño en matera, pay papel y suya Y hasta doble crema Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor